Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg and today I'm going to answer a question that I get asked frequently. This is regarding my Flask Migrate extension and the question is how to start tracking database migrations on an existing project. So the idea is that you have a project and the project uses a database and somehow you you manage that database without database migrations. So now you have a database that is populated with tables and with data in them. And you want to start using Flask Migrate. And you want to do it, obviously, in a way that doesn't affect the contents of your current database. So uh, a lot of people are having trouble uh, figuring out how to do this. So I'm going to show you with an example how this is done. Um, so what I did is I, I took the uh, the example application from my Flask Mega tutorial and I modified it to remove any trace of Flask migrate and database migrations. So now this is a project that is complex, but it doesn't have database migrations. It has a database that was created uh, directly through SQL Alchemy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all the steps to get database migrations working on this project. So the, the very first step that you need to do is the same for new projects and existing projects. And this is uh, the step of adding your Flask Migrate extension into your project. So I have that already done. I'm going to show you quickly what's involved. Uh, so you need to install Flask Migrate uh, on your virtual environment and then you need to import the, the Migrate class, instantiate the class and then initialize it with your application and database instances. So once you do this on your project, you are going to have access to the Flask DB command and this is how we, uh, we are going to manage uh, anything related to database migrations. So step one is done, great. Uh, step two is also the same uh, regardless of having a brand new project or an existing project. Uh, the second step is to create a migration repository. So this is done with the flask db init command. So this creates the migrations directory in your project and then it puts some files inside and basically this is a uh, an empty database migration repository uh, each time we migrate the database a new database migration script will be added inside this directory more specifically in the versions subdirectory inside migrations uh, so uh, one thing to keep in mind is that all the contents, the entire contents of this migrations directory needs to go under source control with the rest of your source files. So you should treat this directory and all of its contents as source code. So, okay, steps one and two done. Step three is to generate a migration. So if you're following the documentation for the extension, you are going to see that the next step is to do flask db migrate and this is where the problems for existing projects begin because see what happens when i run that this is telling me that no changes were detected and it refuses to generate the initial migration for the project so to understand what's going on here uh, you need to think about what happens when you generate a migration. And what happens is that Flask Migrate tells Alembic, which is the actual, uh, the actual uh, migration framework, to, to run a comparison between your models. So, so all the models that you have in your project are compared with the contents of your database. And the contents of the migration are the differences. So anything that's different between your models and your database will be what's uh, what's put in the migration script. But of course, this is a project that we've been 
working on without database migrations. So the database is up to date. It is perfectly in sync with the models. So the models and the database are exactly the same, which means that there's nothing to migrate. And that is why we don't get a migration. So the trick to make that first step work for an existing project is to trick the system into thinking that the database is empty. So then Alembic will go and compare all your, uh, your database models against an empty database and the migration is going to be all of the models. And that is exactly what we want for an initial migration. We, we want to have everything that's, uh, that's currently configured on the database on that migration. So how do we do that? Uh, basically, we need to use an empty database instead of our current database. So uh, this project has a very easy way to change the database. There is a database URL environment variable that I can set to anything, and then the project will run with the database that I point here in this variable. So the easiest way to point it to, to point the project uh, at an empty database is to use an in-memory SQLite database. This is a, a database that is created in memory. It's never written to, uh, to any files and it, it disappears when the process ends. So it's very convenient. Uh, every time the process starts, it's going to be empty. So you can do this in a few conditions. Uh, so you can do it if, if your real database is also based on SQLite, then this is going to work great. Uh, if you're using a different database, so for example, if you're using MySQL or uh, Postgres, this is only going to work if your models don't use any features that are specific to those databases. So if, if you don't have anything in the model definitions, that is specific to MySQL or Postgres or your database, if it's not one of those. So if, if, if you write your models in a completely generic way, then this is also going to work. Now, if, if you are using MySQL or Postgres specific constructs in your models, then this is not going to work because Alembic will not be able to operate. You know, you're going to have... Uh, MySQL or Postgres specific things, and those are not going to work against the SQLite database. So in that case, what you need to do is you need to go into your database administration tool and create an empty database, and then put the URL to that empty database here. So leave your, uh, your existing database alone, make a new database, uh, it can even be uh, made in a different server. It doesn't need to be on the same server. Make an empty database and then put the URL to that database here instead of SQLite. And, and then uh, we are going to run the first migration against an empty database. So, so now we do flask db migrate. We run the same command, but against the empty database. And now all those things that are in the models are detected as new things, and they are written to the database script. So if, if we now, now uh, take a look at the script, uh, we are going to find that there are a lot of things in this migration. It's actually everything. So all the models are listed here in the migration script. So this is great. Now we have our initial migration. So if you keep reading the documentation, the, the next step on, on a new project, now you do flask db upgrade. And this is the step where the contents of the migration script are finally applied to the database. So this is not going to work for for us on, on an existing project because we already have the database with all these contents. The database, uh, we, we can think of it as it's been already migrated. So, so this step uh, cannot be done on an existing project. Uh, the equivalent step for, for the existing project is flask db stamp head. 
And uh, what this does is it adds the Alembic metadata to the database to indicate that the database is updated to the latest revision. So basically we're saying stamp this database with the head revision, the, the latest revision. So this is going to uh, write an additional table in your current database. So this database that you never used under database migrations, uh, there's going to be a new table there. Uh, the name of the table is Alembic version. And this is how Flask Migrate and Alembic will keep track of the version of the database. So now at this point, we have a perfectly healthy project that's using database migrations and it's ready to accept uh, new, uh, new changes to the database. So just to demonstrate how this works, uh, now, now you're fully on, on, a regular, uh, on, on regular instructions, so you can follow the, the instructions in the documentation. So uh, let's assume that we need to make some changes to the models. So uh, let's let's take let's add a, a new column on, on this user table, second email, and uh, let's also create a new model. So let's put those two. Let's make it like this. So we have a new table uh, with with a primary key only, and then we have a new column on an existing table. So, so we now made the changes on the models. Now we can generate a migration. So flask db migrate. Oops, did I make a mistake here? Yep. Yep. Let's try again. So, so now we have a new database migration. We can take a look at the code. And you can see that it detected the new table uh, with its own ID column. It also detected the second email column. And that column, I don't know if you noticed, but it had a unique constraint. So it also detected the, uh, the unique index on, on that, uh, on that uh, column. So, so now we have a migration. And the next step is to upgrade the database. So now we're going with the mainstream instructions now. Uh, so now the changes that are in the models and in the migration script are going to be applied to the database. And it worked great. And now everything is working. So from this point on, you have a uh, fully enabled uh, database that can be uh, let me, tracked with uh, database migrations.